Today I want to talk about something that has always driven me up the stake and wall and that's when there's a story about somebody who dies an untimely death doing some high-risk activity such as mountaineering or rock climbing or base jumping or anything uh, anything of the along those lines that has a high risk of fatality and is easily preventable. Um, the latest story, and this is really sad, this uh, Brooklyn woman fell to her death rock climbing in uh, New, near New Paltz, New York. I sure I don't I don't live there, so I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. But anyway. Um, she was uh, mount she was climbing with some other people and then she was trying to set some protective gear about 70 feet up on the rock face and then she fell to her death and of course that's just tragic she didn't even have a chance at a, at a life but this isn't a judgment on her but what I get really makes me mad is reading comments whether it's from the New York Post, or I don't think they have much in the way of comments anymore, or the Daily Mail, which also had this story, or whether it's on Facebook, or whether it's on Outside, it, you'll find a lot of comments there, like Outside Magazine comments. And always, invariably, somebody says, and I'll just use her as an example, she died doing what she loved. You know, it just really rubs me the wrong way. Now, there's this uh, website or this uh, university, and it's called Lake Superior State University, and every year they have a banished words list. Now, they, they only have a, a list for, like, a word or a couple of words they really should have banished phrases and they died doing what they loved is really should be there it actually it should almost be illegal even to say it if there's anything because it is just so stupid these people have good intentions when they say that person's dying what they they died doing what they love they're not rotting away in a nursing home but the person that's rotting away in a nursing home had a chance for a full life. People like this poor woman here didn't even have a chance. She was only 25. And furthermore, when you say they died doing what they love, are you saying they they love falling to their death? It makes no sense. There's nothing romantic about it. It's a tragedy. And we need to regard it as a tragedy. And then I'm reminded of these books, which, um, let's see if I can, let's unzoom this, that I have bought. And they need to be updated because there's so many foolish people who go out and do um, silly things, high risk things. And anyway, uh, de Off the Wall Death in Yosemite was published most recently in 2007 and Over the Edge Death in Grand Canyon was published in 2012 and these books document every single fatality that happened in those national parks so whether they died in a plane crash situation or helicopter crash whether they died in a fall whether they died uh, because they uh, got lost in the in the woods or in the canyon and they died that way or whatever or they were murdered like good old um, oh what Robert Spangler who did the infamous Grand Canyon divorce back in the 90s where he pushed his wife off a off a ledge and then claimed that she accidentally fell anyway these books are really good if, for reference purposes so you could look at every single death there and but I will tell you there isn't a single person who's died in these or in the Himalayas 
or in the Andes, or wherever they've died, or whatever they're doing, nobody is dying doing what they loved. 